So what is site reliability engineering and why should you care? Well, allow me to illustrate with a story that may be familiar yet triggering. You log on to your favorite website or app. You get an error. You can't access it. You keep trying, it's still failing. Or perhaps you manage to log on, but every scroll, every click is taking ages, minutes to get a result. Hmm. You check your internet, maybe it's you. You turn the Wi-Fi off, you turn it back on again. Maybe even you message your friends to check, are they having the same problem? Eventually, you go to Down Detector and realize this app is down again. You're fed up, you go to a competitor's app and you're having a pretty good experience. And you decide you're gonna spend your time and money over there. Well, it's looking pretty rough for the first app. They've lost you in the immediate and in the long term, all because they failed to provide an experience you expect reliably. Enter the site reliability engineer. Hey, I'm Adam if you're new here and I've been in SRE for a couple of years now and I often get this question, what is SRE and why should I care? And that's what we're gonna cover in this video from you know the key skills, what a day in the life may look like, even salary. So let's just get into it. So let's start with the basics. What is site reliability engineering? Well, its origins actually go back to the 2000s in Google, where the team decided that actually, we need some way to kind of meld the principles of software engineering and operations in order to ensure that the systems that we are creating and supporting are reliable for the end user. And this makes sense given that reliability is the most important feature of your application. It doesn't matter how shiny your trinkets, your widgets, even the cute new picture on your app or website is, if the website doesn't run properly and the end user is getting a really bad experience. And a number of proactive and reactive tasks are done to achieve this reliable state from automation to monitoring and alerting to cloud architecting but we'll go more into depth later on those. The next subsequent question is, what do we even mean by reliable, right? And this is an age old question in the SRE community, right? How do we define a reliable system? What are we even trying to track? And that is a whole subsection and set of tasks in itself. But there are a few metrics that we can kind of look at or a few high level things that we can cover like availability when you access a website or an app, are you actually getting that site or are you getting some sort of error? Latency, are things moving at the speed you expect or are they really slow, like in that example? To summarize the basics, it is the responsibility of the SRE to use the tools and the skills that they have to ensure that the system is reliable for the end user, whether that is some sort of external customer, like you may be using TikTok or YouTube, or even internal end users like developers. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into this. And in order to illustrate the key skills that SREs have, I wanna take you through a typical day of a site reliability engineer. So you get into the office, whether that's a commuter way or literally you step out of your bed and onto your desk. And you log onto the system and you check the monitoring and alerting for the day. You need to make sure that there's nothing has been missed overnight in terms of weird activity or poor performance. You just need to make sure that your automated alerting systems are working. And if something has gone wrong, you need to flag that with the efficient teams or if you're gonna remediate it yourself. And this is skill number one for an SRE, configuring and managing monitoring and alerting. Observability is at the heart of SRE. If I can't see into my systems and what's going on, how will I know when things go wrong? other than when it's too late because the end user is complaining. Now, there are a number of tools on the market that are designed to help with this, from Datadog to App Dynamics, CloudWatch, Prometheus, Grafana, and the ones that you will use as an SRE will all be dependent on the organization you're in, certain limiting factors like cost or time, and actually what your system needs in terms of observability. <laughs> observability. It is your responsibility as an SRE to make sure that you are alerting on the right things and avoiding noise. The only thing probably worse than no observability and like no insight is an extremely noisy system that screams so much that nobody even checks it. And so things just go missing. Okay, so the SRE day continues. It looks like everything's pretty smooth on that end. You may go to JIRA, project management tracking, to see what tasks you've got to get done and then head to your stand up, which is basically your daily meeting. After that, you get on with one of your primary tasks for the day, which may be something like defining SLOs and SLIs, which are service level objectives and service level indicators. Or maybe you're doing some automation and security work in the cloud to make sure that all resources that are launched, such as S3 buckets, are encrypted. So now we have a few more skills to add to this matrix, if you like, or bubble of SRE skills. 
SLOs and SLIs is all about defining what a reliable system looks like and how you will measure it. What indicators will you use? What will define availability? Will it be error rates? What will define latency? We also have some other skills built in there with the cloud and security practices and automation. Maybe you wrote some scripts to get that done. And then maybe it's lunchtime now. You take a break, get whatever you need and you come back. And it's time for your meeting. You was asked a few months ago to prepare for a cloud cost optimization task. You have been charged with reducing the costs of your AWS environment whilst ensuring there are no negative impacts on performance and that the system remains reliable. Splendid. We have a few more skills to add here. Again, we've got cloud architecting. You need to have some knowledge of things like right sizing, auto scaling, maybe life cycles in order for you to be able to complete this task. But you also need to be able to communicate with the others in your team. Maybe you need to talk to the database administrators about reducing the size of a particular instance for right sizing. Or maybe you just need to communicate the decisions that you've made, these data-driven decisions with your line manager and the other SREs in your team before you can go any further. Now it's the end of the day, time for you to walk away from your desk. Psych, you're on call this week, <laughs> which means you need to be ready in case anything goes wrong. Is there an alert? If the system starts to malfunction, this is your responsibility. Now, because you belong to a great team of SREs and devs and infrastructure engineers, it's usually pretty quiet, but tonight the system starts alerting something's going wrong and you're getting a sudden increase in really slow requests. You assess the situation, you look at metrics, you look at logs, and you work out that you're getting hit by a number of requests, a really high load from a really select number of IP addresses. This seems like it could be a DDoS attack which is an attack where you basically are just trying to bring down somebody's system by hitting them with loads of requests. You as a seasoned SRE notice this and decide that you're actually just going to use your firewalls in order to block a few of these, right? And once you've done that and you realize your system seems to be stabilizing, things are back to normal, you write up the necessary notes you need to right now because it is the middle of the night and decide that you're obviously tomorrow morning going to write up the full post-mortem, blameless post-mortem in SRE, and confer with the team. And the skills used here include troubleshooting, right, in order for you to work out what was going on based on those metrics and those logs, but also incident reporting and management. The reality is the work of an SRE varies day to day and company to company, but I just wanted to take you through some of the things that you may be doing in order to show just what it is an SRE gets up to and why their skills are so broad, right, and why their expectations on their knowledge is actually quite great. Let's talk about platform engineer, DevOps engineer, SRE, because the landscape right now is changing and it can get kind of confusing. The reality is SRE takes on a life of its own by companies and individuals. And so the job descriptions you see for an SRE can vary quite a lot. What I've noticed is that the job market seems to be trending towards an all encompassing kind of infrastructure engineer, where you have the SRE typically tasks, and more DevOps engineering tasks, or things we may consider to be DevOps, like CI/CD pipelines or infrastructure as code, like Terraform. Although you will get some people who argue these are all kind of in the same space anyway, DevOps being more of an ideology or a theory, and SRE being the practical implementation of this. Listen, everyone has their own ideas on this. At the end of the day, you're gonna have some job descriptions that will say one thing and some that will say other. So just bear that in mind. I will say though, there are some fundamentals that just appear across the board, like automation of toil and monitoring and alerting. And finally, let's talk the money, salaries. What are SREs making? I have seen SRE salaries in New York as high as $400,000. Now, granted, that is not the industry standard, but I just wanna show you how high these salaries can go. On average, in the USA, salaries are around 157,000 pounds. In the UK, salaries are around 81,000. Flight to New York. And so like all tech jobs, the salary will depend on location, the company, the size of the company, the nature of the work, like banks, for example, may pay a lot more than NGOs and so forth. So that's a high level overview of SRE, but each of these concepts and individual skills and tools are a whole thing in themselves. So if you're interested in me breaking some of these things down, then leave me a comment and let me know. Let me know what specific ones, or if in general you want me to talk more about this. I will see you in the next video.